Jess Stitching May here to do my update video. Um, I'm hoping to come to do videos, come to you guys more often. There will probably be shorter videos. I'm thinking that's what happens is that after I wait for a long time, there gets to be so much to show you that then I'm, you know, overwhelmed by how much there is and it kind of, then it just goes longer and longer and longer and longer. So we'll see how the shorter but more frequent videos do. Let me know, you know, what you think. I am going to do my update videos the with the camera. Um, people seem to enjoy the update videos more with just the camera rather than the live. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to jump right in. So, Stitch Mania. I kind of failed, but kind of passed <laughs> at my Stitch Mania. Um, my original plan was to work on Starry Night for 15 days in a row. And I should and have a monogamous mania. I should have known that wouldn't work because of my work schedule. Um, I work nights most of the time. So, like, when I come home from work in the morning, I don't feel like stitching. And I don't really get up in enough time to stitch before work. So, there are at least, at least two to three days a week that I don't get to stitch because of that. Not counting chasing around my son as well. So, um... I then decided that I was just going to work on Starry Night for 15 days total because I like to take a piece, like I have to go pieces just in case like we go, if he and I go to the playground and let him play, I'll have a to-go piece. So that broke my monogamous right there. So then I was just going to work on Starry Night for 15 days. I barely squeaked in with like one strand on day 13 and like one strand on day 15 to where I actually worked on it. On May the 31st, I finished my 15th day of working on Starry Night. So I did make that. I did pass that. I just didn't do the monogamous. And then I was going to have a bunch of new starts. And I do have um, two, two new starts. Yes, two new starts. A third one that I can't show you because it's a secret gift. I've done a lot of secret stitching, and I know y'all probably think I'm just lying. I'm like, oh, I'm secretly stitching, and I can't show you. I really am, and I'll show them to you later. Um, so anyway, I did well, and I did have pictures of Starry Night. And guys, I'm so shocked at how far I've come with Starry Night. If I have the video, the picture, I will insert a picture here of Starry Night. That was awkward. Let's try this. I'm going to insert a picture of Starry Night at the beginning beginning of the year before I worked on it at all for anything here. And then I'm going to have a picture of where it was before Mania here. I know I have that picture. And then here may, here Starry Night is now. God, those pictures are probably all kind of awkward. Sorry. I'm just awkward with those. One of the reasons I don't do a lot of <laughs> pictures in my videos. Here Starry Night is now. Okay. So just to let you guys know. This half took me five years. I started this. Um, on my birthday, this is a birthday start in 2011 because um, this is what I got for my birthday. It was Starry Night for my husband with a kit. And I also remember that I started it right around the time that I found out that I was pregnant with Connor. So this whip is older than my child is. And it took me five years to do this half. I've done this half just in 2018. My goal, or not this half, this much of this half in 2018, my goal is to do this top part quarter or whatever, the top half of the half, so a quarter of this by the end of the year. And this will go over one, two, three, four-ish more. So my next page is only like four by eight or whatever squares. So if I can finish that by the end of this year, I'll have met my goal. So I'm going to continue to work on this every Friday. Um, I thought I was going to get a page finish in May, which would be just these few holes right here. I would have had a page finish. 
but I've really enjoyed working on this. Um, it's going to kind of, I mean, like, not go to completely the time out, but definitely every Friday. Um, I'll talk more at, towards the end about some plans that I have as far as my rotation goes. I don't really have a rotation, but like every month I'm kind of deciding what I think I'm going to do. Usually changes. It's my prerogative, right? But there it is. I'm so excited about what I got done. I'm really, really, really enjoying this again so much that, that, that I was like, when I finish this, I might start another full coverage. We'll see. I have two, three, three heaven and earths that I like. And um, two of them are paper charts, and then one is a, um, a PDF. And I just, I don't know. I love the way full coverages look when they come out. But the art of, the act of doing them kind of drives me crazy. Are you ready? I'm going to show you my backside. Eee! See? I don't care about my backside, but I'm not ashamed of my backside. I'm embracing my backside. So, with that said, that was my main whip this month, of course. It was Starry Night. And I did start a few new ones. Um, I don't, I know that I showed you that I had been gifted this pattern in the last video. I don't think I had started it yet, just in case I had not going to show it to you again. If I did show it to you, just smile and nod and pretend you care or fast forward. Yes, dear. I need. So, you, can you turn my game on? You can have your Xbox time when I'm done with the video. Unless oh. you can figure out how to turn it on yourself. Okay. If you can figure it out, you can go ahead and get your Xbox time. Go. Cut right there, really. Right in front of the camera. <laughs> Close the door, please. Love you. I don't even know if that threw it out of focus or not. So anyway, if I've already shown, sorry about that. If I've already shown you this, just smile, nod, pretend you care, or fast forward a little bit and you want to see it. But this is Earthly Treasures by Plum Street Samplers. This was gifted to me by um, Melody Stitches. And um, she used to do floss tube videos. She needs to do her floss tube videos again. I'm gonna make her do her floss tube videos again. But that's what it will look like when it's finished. This was gifted to me for my birthday. And this is on 35 count um, classic homespun by R, R Creations. And the threads are as charted. And I have the word enter completed. Just a small start. Just enough to say I started it. Nothing, nothing huge. And then this it was a... Um, Connie got this. She was ordering some stuff and she threw this in as well. So it's another dragonfly. I don't know if you can see it. Some there's kind of light. This is a fabric button needle minder. But there that is. Oh, I didn't get to show you my favorite one. My son for Mother's Day in school, they made us refrigerator magnets, and it's one of his drawing under one of those glass beads. It's not quite strong enough to hold a needle because it's so thick, but I used it to hold my pattern, and it's a little fish. He drew a little goldfish, and I love it. I keep that in all my patterns, and I get to see it, and every time he sees it, he grins. But I was so excited um, when I got that for Mother's Day. I was more excited about that than I think anything. It was a handmade gift. But there that one is. And I worked some on my Connie G designs. This is her black work backstitch sal she doesn't call it a black work sal again because it doesn't have the actual black work stitches but it does look like black work so i keep calling it a black work style but she calls it her black backstitch style and it's a two year long sale she releases one block for every month and it ends up having a total of 25 i think she released one in december but um It'll go, it'll continue on for two years. I am doing some model stitching, so I am a little further along. So I've got that part covered up. But here's where I am. This was December 3rd, 
through June's block. She released June's block, of course, this month. But there that is. I don't have to cover as much as I used to because I'm starting to fall behind. I'm working on July right now. And I'm going to have to frog some because I apparently couldn't read the pattern and completely stitched wrong. But there that is. This is on um, 28 and another needle. See, that is going to be my trademark. A needle hanging from a thread. Some of you park. I just hang a needle from a thread. That's what my floss, that's what my floss shoe name should be, a needle from a thread. <laughs> but um, this is on 28 count, Sunny Dyes. Um, I don't know the name of it. She doesn't make it anymore, so it doesn't really matter because you can't get it. It sounds rude and I apologize. But um, I have a small scrap piece left. It's got the purples and the blues. It's really pretty. And it's DMC 310 one strand. Okay, and then my last new start was one that um, was a last minute start. It wasn't one that I thought that I was going to start, but um, as some of you know, I um, lost my mom when I was like 14. And so this was the, now I'm going to tell you how old I am. This year was the 20, 20th anniversary of her passing. Do I have the, I don't think I have the, I don't have what this is supposed to look like. Um, but through the attic, I got from Silver Creek Samplers, I purchased, um, a pattern from McKenna. And the reason I tell that story is because this says, there once was a girl who had a little curl right in the middle of her forehead. And when she was good, she was very, very good. But when she was, and when she was bad, she was horrid. My mom said a very similar... It was the same poem, of course. It wasn't word for word because we all, you know, kind of summarize or paraphrase. Hers was, there once was a girl with a, with a curl right in the middle of her forehead. And when she was good, she was very, very good. But when she was bad, she was horrid. So, um, she just kind of skipped some words. But anyway, I was told that my whole life. When I was being good, she would say it. And I did. I had a curl. And I still do if I don't part on the side, if I leave it in the middle. There's one hair that just sticks right down the middle of my forehead if it's short. And, um, so when I saw this, I had to have it. And then I was wanting to do a new start that day because I was kind of, the, and I ended up starting this one and it's called Curly Locks. And then to top it all off, the little girl that's in the corner, I can't show you because I don't have the, um, what it's supposed to look like. There's a little girl and she's got, um, overalls and she has red hair with a curl in the middle of her forehead. So that works because it's a redhead and it's not like the bright red. It's like the kind of auburnish red that I am. So that works out perfect. So this is actually charted in I'm using my mommily bag. She actually put up these bags on her group and she called them the Stitching May bag. I felt honored. I had a mommily bag named after me. I have arrived. I've arrived. A mommily bag was named after me. I feel special. Um, this was charted in DMC. Except for one um, week's dye works, which was called Terracotta. And it had a DMC equivalent. But instead of doing that, I used a DMC I had. This is, I think, 430, 431. What number it is? 4130. It's one of their variegation, not one of the colorists, but one of the variegated flosses. So I use that one instead of the terracotta. But everything else is as charted. And this is my start on it. It's not very big. I'm doing this just on 18 count Ada. Cream colored Ada. Just something simple. It's going to go with my stitchy room. So I have the word the and Rihi. V and Rihi. Rihi comes from forehead. <laughs> but there that is. And this is a um a Q snap cover from I think Truly in Stitches. Truly two stitches. Truly in stitches. I can't think of the business name. Um oh wait. I do have it. I, I thought I had it with me. This is what it will look like when it's finished. 
I'm already going to pass this on to somebody that I know, that I've known for a while. She uh, messaged me and told me she was going to have to get it. So that's going to, um, I said, hey, I can just send you mine. Hopefully that will keep me a little more, um, like, focused to finish it. But that's what it's going to look like when it's finished. But um, this is, I know the own business owner's names because she goes to a lot of the retreats. But I cannot think of the her business name right now. But I bought several Q-Snap holders from her and I'm so impressed with the, the quality of them. I'll get more from her later when I need more. Right now I don't need any more. So there that all is and that's it for my start for mania that's my mania wrapped up now as far as plans go what i want to eventually do or i think my goal is that every month i'm gonna have one piece that i kind of focus on like i did this month with starry night and they're gonna change that way i don't get burnt out so, my plans for next month, my big plans, this is not every, every day stitching, but I plan to work on um, my Tree of Hope by Mirabilia. I want that one to be kind of my focus piece, and like, that'll be the main piece that I work on all month long. And then I'll still work on Starry Night every Friday, and then I'll throw the others kind of in, kind of salt and pepper whenever I want to work on them. Um, I didn't work a lot on our lunch bunch trio piece. We didn't get together a whole bunch. I haven't actually I haven't worked on it at all since the last video. So um, just life keeps happening and we don't get together. I think we're gonna have to possibly start like working on it on a certain day of the week or a certain day of the month, even if we're not together. Because I really want to get that piece finished because I do like it. Plus we have other pieces we want to work on together. So. Maybe we can work on them even if we're not together, but just all work on it on the same day. Because right now life keeps happening, keeps us from running, getting to all together all at the same time. Like two of us will be available here, two of us will be available here, and it just doesn't work out all the time. But anyway, so I do plan to um, work on that soon. Um, so I'll hopefully get some progress on Tree of Hope next month, some more progress on Starry Night, of course on the Black Peak back stitch sal and then hopefully all my lunch bunch trio and then some of the others just kind of salt and papered in however i do have a new start planned for next month and that's part of my haul so i'll kind of segue into the haul um i'll start off with this because this is going to be my new start i also was gifted this um over the moon by little house new Yorks by melody stitches for my birthday and it has the thread and it had some fabric in it. And I was going to start it. But then I realized that this had two more pieces that went with it. And the obsessive in me, if I'm going to have it and I'm going to do it, I have to do it all. So I just had to get the other two pieces and then it wouldn't fit on the fabric that was sent with this one. This was, was completely kitted up. So I put that fabric back in my fabric stash. And then I purchased the other two kits. Um, this is Beneath. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, I just got strangled on. I got strangled on air. <coughs> That's a special kind of <laughs> strangle. We get strangled on air. Beneath the stars. And of course, it's got the called for. I'm not going to show you individual colors, but I'll show you. Show them all together. It's got beneath the stars. Because to this, on this one to me, it looks really turquoise. But it's not as turquoise as it is blue. Those are the called for colors with this one. And right now when I got these, these are only like $13 on one, two, three stitch. And that was the pattern and the flosses. And you can't really beat that. They were on sale, so I had to get both of them in. And then there is Under the Sun. And I absolutely love this Under the Sun one. And again, I'll show you the colors. Again, it's more blue than it's turquoise. There are those colors. Because to me, that looks 
online that looked really turquoise, but it's more blue than it's turquoise. And there they are. So there aren't any repeats. I am going to have to probably change one color in here. Um, it's in the first one. I chose... I spent three hours looking for fabric for this because it calls for a 30 count um, Creek Bed Linen. Creek Bed Brown from r, &R Productions. And the piece was like gonna be, it was ridiculous. The piece, anyway, I just couldn't decide on a piece. And then I wanted to get more of the homespun, the classic homespun. Couldn't find that anywhere. I, apparently, that classic homespun is becoming out of print. I don't know, but I, of course, I fell in love with the fabric and it's gonna be out of print. Always, always, always. Because I could not find any of that classic homespun. I absolutely love it. I could find 32 count, but. Anyway, I just went back and forth, went back and forth, went back and forth. And finally, I decided on this 32 count Flax Belfast Linen. And it's just a very light, my normal, boring, off-white fabric. I either go with crazy colors or off-white. <laughs> I'm more of a neutral fabric person. But, because of the color that it is, I was worried that this eggshell is not going to show up. And that's what the fence is supposed to be stitched in on the first one. It's supposed to be this eggshell. And to me, it's like the exact same color. So, I have from Color and Cotton... this fresh wool and I'm going to try it it's very similar but it's got a little more cream to it than this one does I don't know I'm just going to see whichever one shows up better and start stitching and it might end up being white they, they may have a white picket fence because it is a little picket fence so I may change it to white instead of either one of these colors but I've got it in there just in case again I'm so impressed with these With those color and cotton. So this will be my next start. Probably in the next couple of weeks I'll start these. And I'm just going to measure it in because the way I had it, that was my, the issue was the fabric. In order to get the right size fabric, I was going to have to like go twice as big as I really needed. Because it was like, otherwise it was like an inch and a half too short. So, I ended up getting this huge piece, and it's only going to need the top half of the fabric. So, I'm going to measure in, and then, yes, Melody, I'm going to measure in without you being on the phone with me. And I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm going to measure in, and then um, cut off the extra and use it for another piece. So, that was another reason why I went more with a neutral, more neutral fabric, is that way I could save it for another piece, and I didn't have to, you know... I, t I typically buy my fabric to match my piece rather than buy my piece to match my fabric. Okay, and speaking of color and cotton, another segue. I've got this month's installment, and I think you guys have seen them all. I know Emily showed it on her last video. I'll still show mine, just in case you don't see those. The colors are Cape Cod, Deep Pine, Plum Violet, Desert Taupe, in Kalamata. And there are my colors. They're also pretty. I love this purple. This, um, whoops, I'm dropping colors. I love this deep plum violet. And then I like this Kalamata too. Not, not as much for the color. I mean, the color is beautiful, but I like the name of it because I love Kalamata olives. I'm probably saying that wrong. My southern accent. But, um, my great-grandfather was Greek, from Greece. And so, my dad grew up eating olives, fed it in olives all the time as a snack. So then, because he grew up eating that, I grew up eating that. And I absolutely posit positively love fed it in olives. So much that there's a little restaurant, um, that we go to all the time. And, um, the owner is a, um, 
a locally owned restaurant and it's um anyway the owner is greek and she has greek food there sometimes and when i was pregnant i would come in craving feta and she would and she knew i was pretty eclectic so she would make me show her my ankles and judged on how bad i was smelling she would decide whether or not i could have my feta and olives there were several times she told me no no nope, you can't have it so another haul that i got is now anyway leave it to me it always only happens to me so the story is i've always loved the original series of roseanne um always i watched it with my family when i was a kid when i was pregnant i went through the entire um series um my sister joked so that's why i named connor connor because of you know roseanne connor that's not it at all um the character roseanne played not roseanne um some of her here i am you either like me or you don't like me and she defended her ch children she could be mad at her children but she defended her children even if she was mad at her children she would yell at her children but you weren't going to yell at her children type of thing um some of that and her sarcastic wit on the show and her quick comebacks have always reminded me of my mom. My mom always hated to hear people say that because she wasn't always a fan of Roseanne. Um, anyway, um, and I won't touch any of that controversy with a 30 foot pole. <laughs> anyway, nonetheless, when I was pregnant and I had just started cross stitching, I noticed a cross stitch pattern kind of in the background of the Roseanne show. And then whenever the new Roseanne came out, before my husband and I were going to watch it, I was making him go through the entire series because I have it on DVD. So we were watching it and I saw the cross stitch piece again. I was like, oh, that cross stitch piece. I've wanted that for a while. So I had looked at it, was catching glimpses of it, could never figure out what in the world it was. So through that, um, I had Googled a few times but could never find it. Somebody else was looking for one, a sampler that's on the new Roseanne, or was on the new Roseanne, and had put a picture on it. And then I was like, oh, I've always looked for this one, but I can never find it. Da, da, da. We had a whole conversation. And then lo and behold, that night, I randomly looked for a piece for Lori that she's been looking for for a while. And every so often, I'll Google that piece to see if I can find it anywhere. Um like on eBay or a store that's going out of business or something like that. And up popped a cross stitch. And I was like, oh my gosh, I think that's the one that's in the background on Roseanne, the original Roseanne. So then I started like Googling pictures. I pulled up my DVD and sure enough, that was it. And so I got online and I found it eventually on eBay. So my camera cut off on me. So, like I said, I finally found the pattern on eBay. It's from 1959 American Home Crafts. It's a kit. Um, it came in this envelope, apparently. 1959. I do not have a color picture of what this looks like. This is what it came. But it is the Pledge of Allegiance. And it's got two people with... Um, like the old muskets and it says of course the pledge of allegiance and it has liberty and the the liberty bell and the little justice symbol the scale guys this is amazing this right here is amazing um other american home kits to make your to make for yourself or give as welcome gifts so anyway it says make one for a sprightly rose pattern breakfast tray four for a rose bedeckled luncheon table or as many as needed for that special dinner. Each kit contains one mat, one napkin, one coaster, embroidery thread, and instructions. All items are stamped on 100% Belgian linen. $1 each kit. $6, six kits for $5.49. A dollar for a kit? And they have a Pennsylvania Dutch square by square kit, which is actually very cute. 
it reminds me of some of the older samplers, but it's stamped. Again, a dollar. This one was a dollar a kit. I paid thirteen dollars for it. And then um, there's also the kitchen sampler, which was a dollar a kit. So it's amazing to look at these. So this is stamped on this linen. Um, I'm gonna show you. you can't get a pattern from this. I don't think I'm actually gonna use this. I've never done a stamped kit. I think I'm gonna kind of try to put this on to my own fabric, um, just because I'm I'm not good enough to to do it on stamped, and it doesn't even have actual like it's not it's not like it's stamped on Ada, like some of those stamped kits. It's just stamped stamped on fabric. Like this isn't even like I mean it's stitchable obviously because it, anything's stitchable but you're not going to be able to get it through, through the actual holes. So I'm probably going to put this to the side and just hold on to this just for memory. They said they sent the entire kit. This is not the right thread. This is needlework thread or, you know, needlepoint thread. Anybody need needlepoint thread? You've got a cool needlepoint thread holder if you want to it. But, um... Whatever, I'm fine. All that I really cared about was the pattern, and I did get the pattern. $13 for a pattern is not that bad. And it's got the colors, like what colors you're supposed to use. The only thing I'm worried about is the flag. I don't want to show you the actual pattern, so I'll show it to you on here. The flag is, is supposed to be embroidery stitches, where you just kind of fill in the flag there. Um, I'm hoping I can modify that with, with crosses and... Um, just a little bit of an older piece. I don't know. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to actually stitch it on on that fabric or not. The day I got this in the mail was when all that stuff started. But there that is. I like the piece and it reminds me of the old Roseanne. I love the old Roseanne characters. So Everybody needs a Dan in their life. Dan's amazing. So, um, my last piece of haul was a splurge item. And it put me over <laughs> my Stitch from Stash budget. I will not name how much I paid for it. Not that much. I don't pay that much for over, over for charts. But with everything, I ended up going over. Um, but it's one that I've had my eye on for a while. And every time I see it, it ends up being way too expensive and I found this one and it had I talked to the person that had offer and she accepted my offer but it's the blue and the black 2 by Prairie Moon I don't think I'm gonna do this in the red or I'm sorry the red and the black I'm gonna do it in blue I think in fact I think I'm gonna do it with x Designs Peacock Blue but I'm gonna have to order more because I don't think I have enough of the skein that I have to use it because I absolutely love that color and, or Little Blue Bird, not Peacock Blue. I looked at the Peacock Blue. Little Blue Bird. I'm going to do it in blue and black because I love the blue and black. And that is it for my haul. And that is it for my video. I thought it was going to be short. My camera still cut off on me, so I had to be over like 20 minutes. But, um, like I said, I plan to work on Tree of Hope. Sorry not for sure. And then my black um, back stitch sampler. And then just whatever else as it goes. Thank you guys to my subscribers who are coming back to watch my videos. I appreciate you guys. And making these videos seems to help spur my, my um, stitchy bug. Because I think, oh, I can work on this. Oh, I haven't shown this in a while. I need to work on that. So I appreciate that from you guys. Um, and then welcome to all my new subscribers. And as always, take care and happy stitching.